Holy cow, okay. Steve Spangler is Eat back some. from Alaska no, and is offering this. me vegetable shortening. <laughs> uh, so you were not there for the Iditarod. That had already come and gone by Thank the time you, you got yeah. up there. You know, isn't that kind of fun? P teachers do professional development. Great teachers do. And in the summertime, and we were lucky to have 102 who are kind of interested not only in learning about the science of Alaska, but they're interested in learning a little bit about the ecology and the experience to kind of bring back. And I brought just back some pictures and some demonstrations. Take cool. a look at a couple of our pictures. Look at this. Holy we're in Ketchikan, cow. 102 of those great people. Oh, we embedded goodness. our own naturalists and so Steve oh, Schaller is a beautiful. national ranger and took us into Glacier Bay and so got a chance to, uh, let's uh, John Hopkins right behind us, Marjorie Glacier, amazing. Here's the concern, if you take a look in the bottom right hand side, take a look at the rock yeah. right there. First time they're seeing bedrock exposed on Marjorie Glacier. And so the rangers, everyone's a little bit concerned. It just means that the end is coming for that particular glacier as it recedes. So when you look at something like this, they always talk about it as a budget. They want a, a, lots of, of snow at the top to equal the calving that you see down below. Okay. And that's not happen, happening right now. But the movement of a glacier is a physical science piece we can bring back to our kids. And so we're trying to always look for models. Look at this, okay. excuse the reach. So here is that stuff that everyone one plays with you know the glue and the borax and whatever else and we've colored it but it really behaves beautifully once we put it on this incline and we let it go it will slowly start to creep its way down just like yeah. a glacier does and ultimately kind of hang over the very edge but it picks up the land on either side of it as well and so when you take a look at our Colorado mountains and you see these rounded mountains you know that they that was once Glacierville right okay. that the glacier went through there pulled that rock off and eroded it's down, eroded physically amazing yeah millions and millions of years. Then we got another chance as well as we had to take a look at some whales. Take a look at this. Uh, you can see that we're out on these smaller little catamarans and everybody's looking for the whales. We saw some, but I, I promise you I've been doing this trip for a long time. I saw fewer this year than I've ever, ever seen before. This Why? one is in Glacier Bay. A couple things that are going on. Number one, um, the pH of the ocean is changing just a little bit. Wow. We've got that huge kind of uh, uh, plastic mass that's sitting in there in the North Pacific gyre that they talk about. The size of Texas. Can you imagine enough uh, plastic the size of Texas floating around in the ocean? Ugh. We're seeing microplastics now show up in fish. So they're seeing the whales right now in Juneau smaller than they've ever seen before. Same ones that have been around for years. They're seeing the fish is not as, as abundant. So it's not always negative. But I mean, when you talk about ecology, when you talk about global warming possibly and things like that, those are controversial topics sometimes for teachers to teach. So teachers have to learn how to teach it with sensitivity. Right. They need to learn how to teach the facts. And when you bring back right. a demonstration, like, like take this. a look at this. Put your hand on the water. The glacier right now. Yeah, just leave it there for about a day and a half. So, like glacier's glacier's moving, and that's right really interesting. so how in the world does a whale get to stay in water that that's fr that is that frigid cold, right? Uh, they have a, a protective la uh, layer. Oh God, so no. here, put your hand in there. Maybe this will help you. Put it in there. It's still going to be cold. <laughs> it's all yeah, gonna that, doesn't that doesn't help. They have blubber. So blubber is a high density fat. So you can use Crisco to be able to simulate this. So here's what we did is we put Crisco in a bag, and then I opened it up and put another bag inside this bag. So if you take a look, and I'll hold it still, so now we have a blubber glove. So if you put your hand now down in this and blubber, now stick it down in there, you oh, now can stay there forever. Don't even feel it. Yeah, isn't that great? So blubber is a uh, uh, it's a great insulator. Uh, it's a high density uh, fat, it. which amazing. is uh, fantastic. And so when we're bringing back some science pieces like that to the kids, well, they may not see a whale, but they might be able to understand kind sure. of how that uh, the ecology of how that works. And we're trying to bring back a couple That's of demos. Cool. But you okay. know what? This is part of their That's conversation. Very... Take a group of ten year olds, and they're pretty mad about the plastic thing. Right. They're pretty mad about the changes and. And these are the kids, if we plant the seeds, Change it will things. be we're yeah. kind of talking about policy later on. That's the whole reason for this kind of trip. Well, we always teach our kids to leave something better than when you found it. And I'm not sure leave that we are doing that <laughs> with the earth. And no. not necessarily. And so the whole idea is just to provide that experience. So these teachers get to go back and, and be able to share part of their experience. That passion is what teaches. I got a glacier, you got blubber. This <laughs> you is You can cool. have that glacier at your desk. I'll just put it all over your, I'm going to put this all over it's your all computer. Good. Just laying all there. All of it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Thank you.